So uh, my name is uh, Timothy Love. I'm a PhD graduate student in English literature at the University of Missouri. Um, so uh, I just want to start off by saying that um, racism is a reality. Okay, that it is a reality in the world. It is a reality in this country, and it is a real it is a reality in this state. There is not a possibility that somehow racism avoided uh, this state or this city. Okay? Um, it, it was a reality uh, in 1923 when James T. Scott was lynched by residents of, of this city, um, and it is a reality now. But you don't have to <laughs> lynch someone, or you don't have to be a neo-Nazi or a Klan's member uh, to be guilty of racism. No, ordinary individuals, like yourselves, are capable of implicit bias, whether that implicit bias emerges voluntarily or involuntarily. It is possible that seemingly good, kind people, law-abiding people, can sometimes or habitually make the mistake of prejudging people based on the color of their skin. Yes, believe it or not, it happens. It happens outside of work, it happens on the job, it happens in, in our homes. It happens in office buildings here downtown. It happens in the University of Missouri classrooms. It happens in Missouri courtrooms. It happens in Missouri jails, Missouri prisons, in the back of Missouri police vehicles, and before one is pulled over by uh, a cop. Implicit bias is so common that it's sometimes, it's often mistaken for good judgment or a necessary value that contributes um, to effective law enforcement. But no matter how much we wish to justify implicit bias, no matter how much we want to believe that, for instance, certain races simply commit more crime, or that certain races are more violent than others, or that certain areas of town um, where certain ethnic groups reside are more dangerous, Arresting certain ethnic groups throughout the state at a very high rate and imprisoning these ethnic groups disproportionately simply reflects a long culture of bias. It reflects patterns indicative of historical American racism, not rational judgment. We are not, but I guess I'll just ask this question, but how can we get more people uh, more people who are not normally victims um, of implicit bias, privileged individuals. How can we get them to admit to practicing uh, this? How can we get uh, privileged uh, officers uh, or, or <coughs> prosecutors? Um, how can we get individuals <coughs> like yourselves to admit to possible implicit bias? Um, how can we get you to say that I did this and I messed up, I was wrong? How can we um, also convince all of these people that admitting to implicit bias uh, is the first and absolutely necessary step um, if we ever want to change things? I mean, let's face it, admitting to implicit bias is not the end of the world. On the contrary, admitting to racism can, can be a huge first step toward racial diversity and racial harmony throughout this, this state. I know this to be true. A lot of us know this to be true. Yet accusations of implicit bias, of systemic racism, are often undermined, downplayed, haphazardly disproved, or dismissed. People don't want to normally admit to racism, um, even at its smallest degree. Um, there are too many people today who would rather accuse marginalized individuals of crying wolf. There are too many people that <coughs> don't realize or would not rather realize the possibility of their own prejudicial flaws. Instead of accusing, for instance, black people of entitlement, instead of accusing uh, on black people of feeling that the world owes them something. Perhaps we can consider the possibility that most black people are not crying wolf, that most black people are not weaponizing victimization. Yes, we know 
uh, all the numbers. We know that black drivers here here um, in in Boone County uh, are four times more likely um, to be pulled over than white drivers. We know that although blacks make up only 10% of this um, um, city, that 20% of all um, um, uh, that, that, that a 20% of all people pulled over by cops are black. Okay, we know the numbers. Okay, we know that whites are underrepresented um, in, in police arrests in this city and blacks are overrepresented, yet we refuse to blame racism. Um, in response to these numbers, there were many officers last year and currently that say that these numbers are misleading because of so many things, that's because so many things play into it. Um, an officer was on record, um, a, a, a high-ranking officer was on record saying, I can honestly say I don't think we've had a problem over the years. Okay? But, and also, there are, are many officers that believe <clears throat> that they should police more area, they should police areas more so uh, in which crime is most re re reported. And it just so happens that those areas are mostly um, um, are, that those areas are mostly uh, populated by African Americans. But I, I just I just want all of you to uh, uh, you know uh, think think of the fact think of the possibility um, that um, in, in 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 areas that are not heavily policed um, that crime. Um, um, that basically just because an area is not policed, that does not mean crime is going on. All right? There's absolutely no scientific data, no empirical data to affirm that black people have some type of natural, natural proclivity to commit crime. But there is ample data to suggest that blacks are scrutinized more, profiled more, interrogated more, arrested more, falsely accused more, and incarcerated for longer periods of time because of systemic racism. Myself, I've only lived here for a little over three years, um, and I must say that I thoroughly believe that I've been targeted <clears throat> way too much because of, of the color of, of my skin, and I'm not crying wolf. I'm not saying this just to uh, have a voice. A few months ago, I was pulled over by a white, a Missouri, a white Missouri Highway Patrolman on Highway 70. Um, and because of the oddity of the patrol stop, I simply asked him in a respectful manner, did you pull me over because I'm black? And he said, sir, there's no such thing as police bias. <laughs> uh, 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 um, days later, um, two white uh, cops from the University of Missouri uh, questioned me for sitting me for sitting in my own car in front of my own parking lot in my apartment complex. Interrogated me. I'm asking them as they're interrogating me, why are you? What am I doing? Am I doing anything wrong? Then I finally asked them, are you doing this because I'm black? And one uh, one officer said, don't mention racism. If you mention racism, it's only going to piss me off. Okay. Um, not too long after these incidents, I find myself in a Missouri courtroom contesting yet another traffic ticket. In front of a white judge, a white prosecutor said, as she was holding my uh, citation record in her hand, asked me if I have any idea why I've been pulled over so much. I said, perhaps it's because I'm black. And she says, don't you dare mention race in this courtroom. Don't you dare try to pull the race card, okay? As I'm trying to tell her why I'm saying this, the judge screams at me and says, don't raise my voice in the courtroom, although I was not raising my voice. Um, also, um, this past summer, on a Friday night in downtown Columbia, I witnessed a Columbia police officer drive his patrol car very speedily toward a group of black children. He abruptly stopped at a curb right in front of them, scaring many of them and, and myself also. The officer immediately exited his car and began to interrogate this group of children that couldn't have been any more from 9 to 12 years old. I asked the officer why he was bothering these children. 
because they seemed to be peacefully hanging out on the street. I, mean, I was watching them for the past hour. And he claimed that someone had called in a complaint. When one of the children raised the possibility of police bias, of r- racial profiling, the officer got extremely angry. And I was just wondering at that time if that entire situation would have been different if those group of kids were white. In February, I was summoned to jury duty right here in Columbia. The accused or the uh, defendant was a black male. And believe it or not, I was the only black person in a jury pool of 100 predominantly white jurors that that was summoned that day. Right there in the courtroom, I asked the judge why I was the only black juror present. This man is supposed to have a jury of his peers. She said that jurors were randomly selected by computer. I responded, do you think that's fair, judge? And she said she was not allowed to have an opinion. Then I adamantly expressed the importance of having a diverse jury in cases where, in cases where, especially in cases where the defendant is black. I've experienced, I said, I've experienced more racism in this state, in this town, than I've ever experienced before in my life. Dr. Love, yes, I, I'm I, so sorry. I appreciate you sharing your personal experience. Way I, over time, six minutes. So, so sorry about that's that. That's right. And I want to be fair to everyone else that has signed up as well. I know you have written comments, and if you want to share those sure. with the clerk, Thank I'll make sure much. that. And I'm sorry for going over time. No, you're, no, you're great. I appreciate your, your eloquence and your Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, and I'll make sure the other council members get that as no well. No problem at all. Here as well. Okay. Great. Thank you very much.